Hello, Susan Young here. In this video, I will be covering why people go crazy on Labor Day sales. Why people go crazy on Labor Day sales. Labor Day isn't just about bargains and deals. Often shoppers will find themselves spending more than they intended on items they don't really want. In addition, otherwise civil individuals may find themselves pushing and shoving fellow shoppers over coveted merchandise. And, and in worst cases, Shoppers and even employees have been hurt and even killed in stampedes to get to cheap video game consoles and laptops. These are not the actions of rational individuals. As easy as it might be to simply look down our noses at those involved in the most ghastly excesses of Labor Day, the sad truth is that human psychology primes all of us to potentially act in the same way. And of course, retailers are savvy enough to recognize our baser, baser impulses and take advantage of them. Here are the five psychological quirks that retailers exploit and we blindly follow on Labor Day, often to the detriment of our wallets, our dignity, and potentially our hides. Number one, time pressure makes us act without thinking. Even if you generally take your time to research and think about big purchases, the idea that a sale is for limited time can make you forget your usual deliberate approach. For example, you might be thinking about, about buying yourself a flat screen TV but you would like to do some research and comparison shopping. If you happen to be in a store with an incredible one day sale on their flat screen TVs, your plans to research your purchase are likely to go out the window. You would hate to miss out on big savings because you were being too deliberate, wouldn't you? Weren't, wouldn't you? Our Markman of Psychology Today explains that when stores offer the time pressure of Labor Day only sales or sales only within a certain window or on Labor Day, it affects what psychologists Ari Kruvlinski and Donna Webster have called a need for closure. This concept refers to an individual's need to finish with a decision process and subsequently take action. Some people have a high need for closure, meaning they want to make their decision quickly and move on, while those with a low need for closure are more comfortable thinking carefully through each decision before taking action. What happens when retailers put a time limit on their bargains is that it raises the need for closure even for normally low need for closure shoppers. Since the retailer has created a sense of urgency for the shoppers to take advantage of a good price, those shoppers are less likely to spend time carefully thinking through their purchases. And this is why you may find yourself wondering why on earth you put five crockpots in your cart on Labor Day when no one in your family cooks. You are reacting to the low price and urgent time limit rather than taking the time to think about whether this is a good purchase. Number two, door busters play on our fear of losing out. Most chain re retail stores will offer an incredible deal on, on a couple of big ticket items. The problem with these door busters is that the stores generally only have limited quantities in stock, 
as low as 10 guaranteed units per store. Not only does the advertised item get you up and waiting, waiting outside the store with the slavery hordes first thing in the morning, but its very scarcity really primes your competitive instinct. You want to beat out all the other suckers in line. And if you are one of those suckers who misses out on the doorbuster, very few people will then head home in a huff after losing out on the advertised sale. If you've already dragged your rear end out of bed at, at early hours in the morning on Labor Day, you might as well do some shopping. Your fear that you have gotten up early for nothing can lead you to making purchases you don't intend. In addition, the doorbuster's incredibly low price might convince you that the rest of the merchandise at the store is also on sale, even if you don't have any idea if that's true. Number three, competition for merchandise makes us enjoy the hunt even more. We all get a charge out of saving money. Add in the potential competition of every other early rising Labor Day shopper and it turns a mundane activity, shopping, into a pleasurable one. According to a, a, assistant professor of consumer affairs at Auburn University, the competition of other shoppers creates what's called hedonic shopping value or a sense of enjoyment from the mere process of buying, a good, buying goods. Retailers take advantage of this sense of pleasurable competition by limiting the number of door busters and lost leaders and by adding time pressure. They create a sense of implied scarcity by imposing these limits which it engages our hoarding and hunting instincts. Shoppers can take great pleasure in figuring out the best ways to take advantage of retailers' limits as it makes them feel superior to other shoppers. Actually buying this, the sought after items feels like winning. Unfortunately, shopping competition can lead to even darker behavior. Number four, planning your shopping strategy can make you more prone to misbehavior. You might remember the California woman who pepper sprayed her fellow Walmart shoppers at the very beginning of Labor Day sales last year. What got less coverage was the fact that this walking affront to Miss Manners turned herself in 24 hours after the pepper spraying incident. Presumably, she had come to her senses by then. According to psychologist Jane Boyd Thomas, it's likely that the pepper sprayer had planned her shopping strategy and mapped out her route through the store. Thomas's research into the consumer psychology of Labor Day showed a correlation between those shoppers who planned out their shopping expedition and those who engaged in rowdy behavior. While most shopping misbehavior is limited to nasty looks, rude hand gestures, and the occasional scuffle over an item, it does not change the fact that normally polite individuals may find themselves acting in ways that would shock their grandmothers on Labor Day. Having a vision of how your bargain hunting triumph will play out can apparently make you more aggressive when other bargain hunters get in your way. Your dashed hopes for a successful hunt can lead to negative behavior. Number five. A store's environment can put you in a buying mood. Retailers recognize that making sure you're in the right mindset to shop will improve their profit margin. Everything from the crowds to the store decor, to the music playing over the loudspeaker, to the scent of warm cookies filling the air, 
can help to convince you to stay longer and spend more money. As Stephanie Pappas reports in Live Science, studies have shown that positive feelings make pr pro products seem more desirable. By taking advantage of Labor Day mood setter, set, setters, retailers prime their shoppers to feel upbeat and excited for this day, which can make them, them purchase more. The fact that so many people are out shopping with you can also make you feel positively about the common coming day. It positions you as all celebrating Labor Day together, even if you are at the moment in competition for specific gifts. And the psychology of smell is such that a pleasant scent can make you feel great and spend more. Scent is very closely associated with memory and smelling tempting aromas that we associate with Labor Day like cookies can make us remember Labor Day pass, which can lead to more spending. We want to pass that happiness along to next generation after all. Now pay attention because this is how you avoid the madness. Labor Day has been engineered to play on our spending weaknesses. It often brings out the worst in us. Rather that it is our competitive nature or our budgeting weaknesses in the face of $200 laptops or any other merchandise. If you plan to partake in Labor Day shopping this year, be intelligent about it. One, do your research ahead of time so that you will not be tempted into a purchase just because of the sale price. Remember, you're not saving money if you wouldn't have bought that item at full price. Second, be willing to go home empty-handed if the item you're shopping for is sold out. Heading home for a couple extra hours of sleep is, a, is better than buying something just to make your trip work worthwhile. Third, enjoy the shopping, but don't make a competitive sport out of it. Buying something isn't winning. The other shoppers aren't your opponents, and this is all theologically being done in order to buy things for those you love. So don't act in a way that would make them ashamed. They'd rather have you come home empty-handed than with a black eye and missing teeth and the, and the cheap video game in hand. And fourthly, embrace your inner being. While it is lovely to enjoy the Labor Day mood at your favorite retailer, remember that it is being cynically used against you. Keeping that in mind can help you to keep your wallet fat and the questionable purchases to a minimum. Here's what I would suggest. Go to YouTube channel Zero Debt Coach. Brad Long can direct you with your finances. Brad and I will be working together to help you to be successful. When you go to his channel, tell him stop big spending or Susan Young sent you. Question of the day. Are you a person who goes crazy when something is on sale, feel free to make a comment below. How are you doing with this video so far? If you like this video, hit the like button below. Check out my website at www.stopthigspending.com. Leave me your email address at the Contact Us page on the website and I will inform you on my next videos coming up. See you next week here on YouTube and see you in social media. Have a great week.